everyone, it's RPK525 here again with another video on Summer's War vs. Monster Super League. And today we're going to go over the differences in skills between the two games. Now, for the most part, the gameplay between the two games is fairly similar. A lot of people say they copy each other, but it's not really the case. Once you get into actual details about the games themselves, you can see that they clearly do not straight copy each other. It's kind of difficult to have games like this that are completely different. So, we'll just get into an actual fight on both these games here. Okay, so, I took Auto Battle off on both of them. So, what we've got on the bottom here is Monster Super League. I brought in my team, and as you can see, it is currently my turn. And there's nothing... Nothing to press but the buttons on the sides and the monsters themselves. I can select targets, and let's say I want to target this uh, robo-bot here, and I want to attack it with this girl over here on the end, this, this Mona, Evil 3 Mona. That's it. That's the attack. Now that my attack ended, there's a little SP gauge on the bottom underneath their health. That's when they get their active skill. So we're going to go ahead and just kill these off here. So, turn one is over on this side. Now, up on top here, we got Summoner's War. Now, the entire enemy team went on this one. So, now we're going to go to Summoner's War. Now, green circle showing that we have the Panda Warrior. It is currently his turn. He's got his passive that is going on all the time. I could cast Calm Mind on me and my allies, or I can then use Sequential Attack on the enemy. Now I'm going to do Count Mine just because it's something to do and we'll get to the point. Now underneath all of the monster's health bars is a blue gauge. Not the SP gauge. Not similar to It's similar to that, but in a different way. That is actually their attack speed. So we'll do that. Gauge empties. Enemy get, got to go before my next ally went. Just because it had a faster speed. So we'll do you know another attack here. And now it's this guy's attack. So we'll go through and do that. Enemies get to go, then it's again my panda's turn. He goes, you know, usually kills, almost kills whatever he hits, you know, whatever. And it keeps going. And now, eventually, this skill is down to a one turn cooldown. It's on a three turn cooldown, but in my next turn, I'll be able to use it again. So that's how skills work in Summoner's War. It's simply. You choose the skill, you choose the target, cooldown goes by, skill becomes usable again. And, of course, I'm running at three times speed, because that's kind of what I do in both games. And now, he, his, his skill yeah, makes it so he heals every turn and counterattacks, which makes him awesome for stages like this, because he takes his turn. Well, now it's not going to happen, because... So we'll just clear this, this one out really quick so I can actually show it. In this case, for this specific monster, it's really strong because he casts his heal ability, and then all of the monsters attack him, he then counterattacks, dealing most of their health and damage. And yeah, he goes through and he kills them all. So, we're going to go back over to Monster Super League over here. So, after my turn ended last turn, when I attack the monsters... Every once in a while, they'll create uh, these little red or blue orbs. Now, the red orbs heal my monsters when they get them. The blue orbs increase the SP gauge of my monsters. And once these SP gauges are full, I get to unleash their active skill. Now, the catch here, like you saw with the panda... I don't care about that. <clears throat> I'll go into more detail on this one. Now, the biggest difference between that, like, now, she has her active. She's glowing blue, her active's available. Slide up on her attack bar, and boom. She does her attack, giant AoE. Hers happens to have a defense break on it. So now, you know, the defense broken monster is the one I'm going to focus down. Move on to the next monster. Try to kill them all. You know, it created a bunch of blue souls. You know, now, my healer has active available so I'll use that that's a healing skill instead now there's nowhere that tells me this at all this is just the stuff that I know because these are my monsters I know what their skills are that's 
slightly a disadvantage. But both games have this uh, nifty little auto button, and your team just does it for itself. So while that's going to finish off that last fight here, I'm going to go over and talk about my Wind Panda here. He's a good example to start with. Now, he's got a total of four skills here. Every monster has four skill slots. Let me try and find some. That's a really good example of it. Um, I think... Yeah, Shannon. She's got four skill slots, but her fourth slot's empty. She only has three skills. Yep, Bernard, he's got four. Homunculus is four. Yeah, most of them, three or four. And I, the Homunculus is a good example here. He's got this thing. It's a passive. Passive ability. It's just always active. Well, for the most part. It triggers automatically. You don't have to press any buttons or anything for it to happen. So we're going to go back over to the Panda. So, the Panda sequential attack is his basic attack skill. This is what he does when he has nothing else to do. And this is a, the spell, you know, ability that he uses, whatever you want to call it. You know, it removes all harmful effects, heals all allies every time they take a turn for two turns, and counterattacks whenever he gets attacked. Now this is his passive. An automatically triggering effect. Increases attack bar by 20% whenever he gets attacked by an enemy. Also, all of his attacks deal damage proportionate to his defense. Which makes him a very, very tanky monster. That deals good damage. And then he has a leader skill. So when he is chosen as the leader, only within guild battles, for this in this case, the defense of all monsters is increased by 44%. Now that's pretty good. Can jump over to this guy over here. He's got, you know, he's basically just a pure glass cannon. Does a ton of damage with this, blocks HP, bunch of debuffs, and does decent damage on this one. And this one's just a crap load of damage. His leader skill attacks all allies, or attack power of all allies is increased by 33% only in dungeons. That's another one with a restriction on it. Now, there are some monsters that don't have restrictions on it, like this guy. He's got speed increased of all allies. And that's another big, big thing between the two games. Summoners War utilizes speed to decide who goes first, whereas MSL, you always go first. Your enemy always goes second. There is a balance to that, though. So, don't think that's completely unbalanced. So now we're gonna X out of here, go back to the area we were in. I said, one of these zones, whatever. Doing this just to level these monsters up. Like, he's already max level, so I'm going to switch him out with something else. Just to have it doing something while I'm talking about the other one. So, we're going to jump over here, and... Let's see. Mona. This is the, uh, the one that did the defense break ability. So, her skills... Looks like a lot, but it's really not. You know, her first normal skill, which is her basic attack, when you click her... Or tap her. She slashes the enemy with a sword that can cut through coral. And, once she is a 3 star monster or higher, grants a 100% chance to restore S her own SP by 20%. Which is awesome, because it means her active skill goes up. That was the SP gauge we were talking about earlier. And, Coral Thicket, her active ability. Summons a coral reef upon the enemy, dealing damage to an area. So the entire area of the monsters, all of them take damage. And active skill requires the SP gauge to be full. And you cannot overfill the SP gauge. Very important thing to remember. And this monster specifically has a 50% chance to reduce the enemy's defense for two turns. Every time she does the active, which is amazing because it's an AoE, so she could, by luck, break the entire enemy defense. And this monster has a, uh, if you notice down in the bottom here, this little rainbow icon. It's, it might be a little tough to see, but, you know, if the monster has that little rainbow icon, that means that monster is a variant, meaning they get the leader skill. Now, that's the biggest difference between Monster Super League and Summoner's War in terms of leader skills. Every monster in Monster Super League has a leader skill, but only if they're a variant. You can turn non-variants into variants, but in some cases it's hard to do. 
like getting a five star natural variant like this guy extremely extremely uncommon but then we have you know here's my other five star we have this one yeah you know, she's not a variant she has no leader skill it still shows what her skill would be but it's not active it's still got the little lock on it but like this one she's you know she attacks basic attack charge for it and stab the enemy with powerful slash multiple times and grants 100% chance to restore 20% of her own HP, making it so she's really hard to kill. Every time she attacks, she heals. Her active ability taps into full power and calls down the gushing pillars of wind that greatly damage all enemies. AoE attack, which is awesome. Most monsters have AoEs for their active. There are a handful that don't, but her passive ability, once she reaches 5-star, which she's a 5-star natural, but once she reaches 5 star or higher, she gets the passive on her active ability, which is attacks all attacks restore HP to allies equal to 10% of her max HP. Now, that's slightly misworded, because it's actually 10% per monster hit. So if you hit 4 enemies, you can pretty much full heal a team, because this is a monster that you you usually go a lot of HP on. Like, mine's got, you know, 56, 57,000 HP. Whereas, you know, this one's got 100,000, but... We're gonna go over to a lower level monster here. Ah, him. Doesn't matter. So, he's a variant, so he does have his leader skill, but he's only a 4-star monster, so his active passive ability is currently locked. Whenever I use his active, it doesn't trigger this ability whatsoever because he's not five star. Now, one of the bigger—that's another one of the biggest differences between the two games. You need to five star your monsters in order to get the active abilities to trigger. Whereas Summoner's War, you don't need to five star them. Some of them you need to awaken them, which is a different process, but it's usually easier to 5 star, then it, or it's usually easier to awaken than it is to 5 star. But again, those are two completely different things. But that pretty much concludes this video. Uh, I will be trying to release videos a little bit more often. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, if you want to watch me on Twitch, I'm always there at RPK525. And have a great day.